Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an image swap on scroll with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right. So the first thing we need to do is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here and click on add new. Uh, we're going to give this page a name. And uh, in this case, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call this scroll and then click on use Divi Builder. So for this example, I'm going to build everything from scratch. However, you can do this technique on existing pages as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on start building. And uh, we're going to go with um, these two equal columns. I'm going to go ahead and select them. Now, before we add any modules, what we need to do here is to go into our row settings and set our widths. So I'm going to come over here, click on this gear icon, design, sizing. And here we just need to make sure that uh, our width here is set to 100%. And also our maximum width needs to be set to 100%. All right, so now that we've done that, the next step now is to go into our column one settings. So to do that, we need to come back over here to content and then click here on this little gear icon for column one. So I'm going to click on that, click on design. And here we need to add a top and bottom padding of 50 pixels. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and add my padding like that. Now notice that I've activated that chain and that is because I'd like to add the same value both to the top and the bottom. All right. So now that we've done this, we also need to go into column two. So we're going to do that by coming over here to the uh, other column. Click here on this gear icon, design, spacing. And this time we are going to add 12 VW both to the top and the bottom and we also need to add left and right which is going to be 5vw now notice i'm using the changes i mean the chain as well right so now that we've added our padding on our columns it's now time to add our image onto column one so i am going to now save this save one more time and here we're going to click on this plus button and search for our image module and select it all right, so now it's time to add the image. So I'm going to click here on this area. And as you can see, I already have my images here in my media library. But if you want to use your own images, this is the size. So these have to be rectangles at 800 by 800 pixels. All right, so now with my image selected, I'm going to click upload an image. And now you can see my image has been added. Right, so the next step now is to add a background color to this. So I'm going to come over here to background and click on this plus button and paste your color like that. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. And also, if you want to download this layout, it's also absolutely free. All you have to do is to go to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below as well, and just download it from there. All right, so next I'm going to come over here to design, and then we're going to click on sizing. Here we want to force full width and make sure that is set to yes. And the next step now is to add top and bottom padding, which, which I'm going to do, which I'm going to do by coming over here to spacing and adding 100 pixels both to the top and the bottom. And notice that I'm activating that chain so I can add the value. All right. So now that I've done this, we need to clone this image module three times. So I'm going to save this and then just clone this three times. That's one, two, three. All right, so now you can see the images down here. All you have to do now is to go in and replace these images with images from our media library. So this one here is our first image. So you want to go to the next one here, click on the gear icon, click on this area and change the image to this one here. And notice that the sizes are all the same. That is very important. So I'm going to save that. And you also need to change the background colors of these images. So I'm just going to go in here, click on background and paste my background color over here. All right. So we're going to save that. Next, we're going to go to the third image. And again, we need to go into this gear icon to go into our settings and then choose our image, which is going to be this one here. Upload an image and I also need to change the background. So I'm going to um, replace that background color by clicking over here and replacing it with this color here and then save. Then next we need to uh, move on to this one here. Click on the gear icon, change the image. And this time 
we're going to go with this one here, upload an image, go to the background. And we also need to change that background color. And I'm going to paste it in here and save. Now, remember, I mentioned that if you'd like to use the exact same colors that I'm using throughout this uh, tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So now that we have this all set, the next step now is to add a text module onto column number two. So I'm going to come over here and click on this plus button and search for my text module. Select it. And what I need to do here is to just add some dummy text, which is going to act as my title. And I'm going to set this to heading two. So to do that, you want to make sure you highlight it. Click on this drop down and set this to heading two. Now we need to stylize this text. So to do that, we need to come over here to design heading text. And remember, we set this to heading two. So you want to make sure you're on the right tab. And we're going to start here with our font, which is called Anton. So I'm going to select it. And we also need to add our text color, which is going to be black. And now we need to set the size and the size is going to be 4VW. And we also need to set our line height and our line height here is going to be 1.4 EM. All right. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. I'm going to save. And the next step is to add another text module, which is going to have our paragraph text. So I'm going to search for my text module here and select it. Now in here, I'm just going to add my dummy text. But in your case, of course, you want to add the text that describes your products. All right. So now that I have this, uh, the next step now is to come over here to design, go to text. And the font we need to use here is called Open Sans. So I'm going to search for it and select it. Now, these fonts are absolutely free and they're Google fonts. So... Don't be afraid to experiment and use different types of fonts here. All right. So now that I've set that, I'm going to uh, add my text size and uh, it's going to be 0.9 VW. And then we also need to set our line height, which is going to be 2.6 and then save. Now over here, we need to add a button module. So let's click here on this plus button and search for our button module. All right. So the text here, you can leave it as click here. It's up to you what you want to save it as. And then over here on the link, I'm just going to add a blank link. But in your case, you want to make sure you add a link that takes you to the specific page. Now we need to stylize this button. So we're going to come over here to design button and activate use custom styles for button. Now, this is very important that you do that because this is what allows us to go in and make adjustments to our button. All right. So next we are going to um, go to our text color and this needs to be white. And I know right now you can't see anything because our color here matches with the background. So the next step now is to add our background for the button. So we're going to set this to black and then further down here on our border width, we're going to set this to zero. And then for our border radius, we're going to set this to 100 pixels. OK, so that's just to change the style of our button. All right. So moving on, the next step we need to do now is to add our font. So I'm going to scroll down here and add our font. And it's going to be Anton because that's the same font that we used on the heading text. Right. So moving forward, uh, the next thing we need to do here is to add a bit of padding to our button. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to start with a top and a bottom padding of 50 pixels. and left and right is going to be 33. So pretty much that's all we need to do right now. I am going to go ahead and save this. The next step now is to apply scroll effects to our images. So I'm going to start here with this very first image. So I'm going to click here, go to advanced scroll effects. And the one we're going to go with is the fade in and out. So I'm going to select this tab and activate it. Next, I'm going to uh, set my center point here to 39%. And then the viewport top is going to be at 40%. So I'm going to drag it all the way down here to 40%. And then over here, we're going to set our opacity to 0%. And then our starting here is also going to be 100. So that's all we need to do here. I'm going to save this. Now we're going to go to the second image. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, advanced, and we need to go to scroll effects. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We're going to come over here to fading in and out, activate it. And this time we are going to set this to zero, 100, and then zero again. All right. So now that we have this all set, the next step now is to break this. 
So our first two values here are going to be 49% and 40%. Okay, and this one here is going to be 49. Then our viewport top needs to be at 50%. So let's drag it all the way down here to 50. And then here, our viewport bottom also needs to be at 40. There we go. All right, so I have this all set now. I'm going to save. Now let's go to image number three. So I'm going to scroll down here. Click on this gear icon and go to advanced, scroll effects, and then choose fading in and out, activate it. Uh, and again here, we're going to uh, add our final opacity here to 0%. And we need to break this apart. Right, so this time we need to be at 59 and at 50%. So I'm going to drag this down to 59. And this one here, the viewport top needs to be at 60%. There we go. And then here... The uh, viewport bottom needs to be at 50% as well. So I'm going to drag it all the way up here to 50%. There we go. All right. So pretty much that's all I need to do here. I'm going to save that. Now let's move on to the final image. So again, I'm going to click here on this gear icon, advanced, scroll effects, and activate fade in and out. And then here it's going to be 0, 100, and 100, which is fine. The next part here is to set our viewport top and also our viewport bottom. So first of all, let's split this. Okay, so this needs to be at 100% like that. And then here we need to be at 60. And our viewport bottom here needs to be at 60 as well. There we go. So pretty much that's all I need to do now. I'm going to save this. So what I need to do next is to add position settings to our first module. So I'm going to come back up here, click on this gear icon, advanced position. Now the position I need to set here is going to be absolute and top left. So I'm going to come over here, click on this drop down, choose absolute, and we need the top left. So making sure that uh, your top left is selected, we need now to extend these settings to all the images in the column. So I'm going to right click, extend image styles and next I need to extend these settings to this column so I'm going to go ahead and choose that and click on extend so pretty much that's all we need to do so I'm going to uh, save this so we're going to publish the page all right so now we're going to test and see if this is working so I'm going to start scrolling slowly and as you can see here the image here is going to be changing There we go. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and to follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.